And this is the will of the Father, that I will not allow anyone whom he has given me to get lost, but I will raise it up on the last day. As we said in the beginning of the Mass today, we are celebrating the commemoration of all souls. Remember all those loved ones, all of us have those people who have gone before us in the hope of the resurrection. And that's why the Church as a mother on this day, as we remember and also fill up emotion, because we know that those people were really great people in our lives, and we really miss them so much even after years of death, the Church as a mother comes to us and open for us the Holy Scripture. Where there, she give us the hope that the word of Scripture that we read will help us, we who are left behind, prepare ourselves to meet the Lord and be with our loved ones. In the first reading today, we hear the prophet Isaiah speak about the mountain. On this mountain, the Lord will make a big table, a table full of good food. And this mountain is built on Mount Zion. And Mount Sinai is the mountain on which Jerusalem is built. And then Jerusalem of Tel Aviv really reminds me of the heavenly Jerusalem, which is awaiting all of us, the new Israel. Because by immersion in Christ's death and resurrection, we become a new creation. We become, again, candidates of that happiness, adoption of the Eternal Father with the inheritance of everlasting life. He said to us, on this mountain, the Lord will take the veil that web us through all the centuries, that web of sin. And yes, the Lord now will give us what we have looked for. That day when we will be united with him. In the Gospel today, John again repeats himself what he said in chapter 3 of his Gospel. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him will have life and life eternal. And that's why Jesus said in the Gospel today, I did not come to do my will. I come to do the will of the Father. And what is the will of the Father? That I will not lose anything that the Father has given me. If you remember, the word is anything. He's not just speaking of human nature. He is speaking of the whole creation. Because by sin, the sin of Adam and Eve, the whole creation become victim and enslavement to sin. That's why we see decays, sickness, war, even, even plants goes bad and everything. Why? Because of that sin. <coughs> the sin of disobedience. But then Jesus came, and although he forgave the sin, but we still have the consequence of the nature. We still are a fallen nature. And that's why Jesus said, and I will not lose those the people have given me, but I will give them eternal life. I will shower them with life eternal. Because I did not come to do my will, I did not come to condemn the world. I come to save it. And the only condition that needs from the individual to be saved is to believe in Jesus. That his God, this Jesus, become flesh. And he become flesh for one reason. That by his life, death and resurrection, we can be saved. And that is the immersion that each one of us have by virtue of our, our Christian calling. That by immersing ourselves in Jesus and become one with Him, we one day will have eternal life. And all I said now is all in that second reading. I think it's the most beautiful reading that we have. Where St. Paul reminds us of that great gift that we have as people. The people of God. And so he said to us in that letter to the Romans, are you not aware that we who are baptized in Christ Jesus are baptized into his death? Are you not aware 
that when we were baptized, we were baptized and went into the water of baptism. That's why in the early church, they used to immerse the people in the water. That once we go in that water, we die to myself. I die to my sinfulness. I die to my ego. And I die now to have a new life. And that life is in Christ Jesus. That's why he said we have to die in order that we be immersed with Jesus. We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death. So that just as Christ raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we might too have a new life of life. We were buried. In the waters of baptism we die to my agenda. I die to what I think is be good for me. And I die with Christ so that I can be open to Him who is going to lead me to reach out to those among us and among me and those who cross the path of my life. And that's why he continued and said, for we have grown into union with him through death like his. As Christ has to die on that cross and from the dead, life come to this world because we are reconciled with the Father, we too have to die. We too have to be nailed to that cross. Saint Paul said, Jesus, on the hill of Calvary, when he was hanged on that cross, he became sin. In fact, when he was on that cross and cried to God, Eloi, Eloi, alimak sabachthani, that means, my God, my God, why you have forsaken me? At that time when the father looks at his son and saw him how ugly he became because of sin, the father rejected him. Because evil and good does not go together. And this is the situation we are living today. We cannot compromise with evil. Intrinsic evil is evil. And we cannot compromise with it. And that's why God the Father turned away from his son on the cross. We can understand it because he is God. But we know that he was so ugly because he was loaded by our sinfulness. And we know that St. Paul continues to say to us in those beautiful words today, we know that our old self was crucified with him. What is the old self? The old self of life of sin. That was crucified with him. That we might be done away with. That we might no longer be enslaved to sin because sin made you slave. Let's take, for example, the sickness of alcohol, the sickness of addiction. My dear people, they are slaves. If they don't have that bottle in front of them, they go nuts. If they don't have that drug or whatever it is, whether a prescription or not, they go nuts. And that's why they send them away for 30 days so that they really become again normal people to, do, to really uh, begin another life, give them another chance. So by sin we become slaves. And believe me, we are. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. When you are dead, you're not going to commit no sin. When you die, 